The reports this week about the activities of Cambridge Analytica, the analysis firm which harvested the data of 50 million Facebook users, has shown how vulnerable our democracies are to subversion through social media. Sites such as Facebook have the potential to become unwitting allies in the spread of misinformation and mass manipulation, and it is damaging our democratic processes. Up to now, social media giants have been resistant to government, media and public pressure to change, but not just on data, but on issues like extreme content and tax too. But now they have to act. They have to act urgently to regulate themselves and regulate who can access the data of their users and what content is put out. If they don't, governments will have to. But without the tech know-how of the companies themselves, Government regulation will probably be clumsy and will inevitably detract from the freedom that the users of social media currently enjoy. So in the interests of us remaining a free society, these tech companies need to step up and use their ingenuity to protect our data and our democracy. Well, before any of my learned friends reach for their pencils and uh, <laughs> save them sending in letters, let's just say what the two companies that get key to this say. Cambridge Analytica, we entirely refute any allegation that Cambridge Analytica or any of its affiliates use entrapment bribes or so-called honey traps for yep. any purpose whatsoever. We routinely undertake con conversations with prospective clients to try and tease out any unethical or illegal intentions. And to Facebook, which we're also to talk about, Mark Zuckerberg, of course, founder and CEO, has said, we have a responsibility to protect your data, and if we can't, then we don't deserve to serve you. I've been working, he says, to understand exactly what happened, how to make sure it does not happen again. The good news is the most important actions to prevent this from happening again today, we've already taken years ago, but we made mistakes. There's more to do. Mm. We need to step up and do it. So that's all safely parked. Right, June. Yeah. How funny, then. How funny that as a result of the Trump victory, suddenly we're concerned about that. Because, June, you are a Brexit-hating, Obama-loving, yes. plebiscite-loathing lovey. Oh, yeah. If this had gone the other way, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have given a, damn, given a damn about it. But can I refer you? Can I indeed... Not at all. Can I put forward... Can I put... They can... swung the elections for Brexit. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Absolutely, oh, absolutely yeah. not. Really? Why did you raise great, it, then? This great hoo-ha over Donald Trump. By the way, Cambridge Analytica also worked for Ted Cruz. And look what a smash hit his campaign was. But can I present to the court, please, evidence from the paper that I read regularly, The Guardian, February 2012. Mm. February 2012. When I read, and I read, that Team Obama are building a vast digital data operation for the first time combining a unified database on millions of Americans they didn't using steal Facebook the data. to target individual voters to a degree never achieved oh. before. Facebook is seen as a source of invaluable data on voters. The re election team. Obama for America will invite his supporters and on and on and on. They were doing well, many years ago. Point? The truth of the matter was that, that Trump point? was more successful. What's this your point? Forever. This has happened for... There's, no, there's, there's no, nothing no, to no, say. No, 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 for starters, the data wasn't stolen in the yeah. Obama campaign. It wasn't scraped from everyone's no, friends' profiles. Exactly. Which and they did and the difference is the people that were the data that was mined here, the those that the data that was used, the majority of those people had no idea that their data was well, being manipulated. And also please, in that there's a very important point here. Very important point here. 2012. Let's keep this in perspective. Yeah. Do you know when Facebook was founded? Zuckerberg himself just said, oh, 14 years ago, 14, 2004, 14 years ago, I didn't think we'd be in this position where yeah. we'd have to consider all these things. Yeah. This revolution has happened at the speed of light. Yeah. In the six years since what you quoted, look how far things have come. Cool. We are now waking up. Do you know what the you know what the big four are called? They're called fangs. Yes. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Netflix and, Google. and Google. Do you know what their values are? Facebook over five hundred billion. Yes. Together trillions. These are so powerful now, they've just grown into these mammoths. And now we've got to stop. And what they're not doing is they're not investing in their integrity. No. And what people are now saying is not Silicon Valley, it's Silicon Valley. <laughs> that, precisely. So we've got to be very careful. This is something that's really good for the world, really good for business, really good for consumers, but it's got a very dark the, side. Where's the evidence, no, no, no. Uh, where's the evidence well, they've done anything wrong? The number one thing that was trending last week was delete Oh, Facebook. my God, because no, of trending... No, let me done. finish. My point is, so why I'm saying that they need to self-regulate yes. is because what's happened now is up until this point, the public still has had a blind trust in these companies. Yes. What's happening now no. is they're losing public trust. But where's the evidence they've done anything because, wrong? Well, they have done something wrong in well, that they allow no data I mean, look at, look at to be YouTube. used How in a way that How many films are still on YouTube, owned by Google? How much is on there that is 
dreadful stuff that shouldn't be there. They are making so much money now. It is their responsibility to invest in policing their sites. It is their responsibility to do it. We've got to make sure that the mistrust, the mistrust that the public have in them now is what could bring those companies down. I think I think that what we see here is that it's hard to know whether to overreact to yeah. what's happened mm. with Facebook well, we have to or underreact to what's happened with Facebook. And the facts are is that Facebook has got two billion users. It's, a, it's not a company, it's a country. Yes. I mean, China's country. got 1.4 billion <laughs> uh, population. Yeah. Facebook is bigger yeah. than China. Yeah. Therefore, it behoves Facebook to behave incredibly responsibly. But the question, Nick's question is also pertinent. Mm. To what extent can we prove the fact that these people who were targeted with these ads or who were exposed to these ads actually voted a certain way? And you know what's and going to come out this weekend? What? This weekend is probably going to come out about the whole impact that this has had on Brexit. There we go. Well, that's that's, that's, what that's going to happen this weekend. Before, You've got no evidence. Just wait and see. No, no, wait wait so and see we, what comes out. Can we hear what what's the best? I think, I think we do need to take this seriously. And uh, Elizabeth Denham, the Information Commission, is incensed. Have a look at what she has to say. My fining power is up to five hundred thousand um, pounds. That's not a great deal of money. It's not. It's not a, a disincentive for for some organisations. But as of May, my fining power will be up to four percent of a company's global turnover. So much more significant powers. Yes, so I think these companies are going to start taking this stuff very seriously. Michelle, you're the tech genius amongst us. What do you think? Right, I feel I need to make my first points counter your stuff about manipulation in Brexit. Why do you have to counter everything? Why is it I always say? Brexit? Why do you not agree I with feel, me? I feel the wrong. need. <laughs> I do feel the need. So there was actually a study done um, in November 2017 which looked at 22.6 million tweets during a period um, that the US Senate had identified. 450 of them were. 400 yeah. were potentially, potentially a bit dodgy. Now, 400 tweets out of 20 odd million, I can safely say, and you know, I may be proved wrong in time, I'm not actually sure that Brexit was achieved by. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. so let, just before but we anyway, even talk about. Yes, you want to say something? But my, my broader point, mm. which is about data and the use of data. Mm. What's gone on here is that we have been a nation of naive customers. Yes. Because you must make no doubt that we're not users of platforms mm. such as Facebook, etc. We are customers mm. of people like Facebook. And data, when you consider Facebook, data is its blood, its bones, its oxygen. It's how it creates its value. It's how it makes its revenue. And when you talk about mass manipulation, mm. manipulation to the public has gone on pretty much forever. If you pick up a newspaper, mm. you journalists, you're trying to persuade the reader of that use, uh, newspaper to follow your agenda. If you, if you let every newspaper out on a table and read a story, the story is presented differently depending on which publication it is presented within. Advertisers, for decades and longer, have been trying to manipulate consumers to purchase and, pre and prefer their products. So what we're so saying what is that we, they now, don't have to take any responsibility? No, where we are now today is we are hyper-sophisticated, we have big data, it allows, it allows businesses, for example, to efficiently target consumers to the nth degree. Which is why, no, but just, which is why, if I may, which, which, which is why, be responsible. Which, which is why that we are moving with the times. We've had the data Protection Act for a long time. Yeah. That is now completely yeah. outdated. Yeah. So yeah. now we we're bringing now out GDPR, GDPR, which is coming out in May, the General yeah. Data Protection yes. Regulation, which is an EU regulation, by the way. A lot oh, of them are actually yeah. very good. And, we're and also this one is going to this one is going to give us much more control of the consumer. We have power over our data. It I'm belongs to, to us. Nick, and I think and I that's really important that we have Nick. this now. Just need to clarify. I agree. We're not suggesting that I agree Facebook, with you on something. No. Just need to clarify that we're not suggesting Facebook has manipulated any data. Quick point before I throw it back. Can you? and my learned lord here, yes. just accept that there was no manipulation. People perhaps wanted President Trump and people wanted Brexit, and that's the reality of it. It might not be the way you wanted, but bad luck, no, but you lost and they that, won. No, 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 What's oh, next? Nick, for me, the actual outcome of the election is not the point. Can, I, can we hear what Christopher Wiley actually said in answer to your yes, point that it was on. all just the people's will, they weren't influenced by anybody else, they weren't influenced by... This is the whistleblower. Yeah, let's hear from Christopher Wiley, the whistleblower from Cambridge Analytica. 
this is based on this on an idea called informational dominance, which is the idea that if you can capture every channel of information around a person and then inject content around them, you can change their perception of what's actually happening. So they thought they wanted Brexit and Trump, but in fact they were told to want Brexit I, I and Trump. I say to you what I said, where's the evidence? No, 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 but Nick, where's... Nick, for me, the, the outcome of the election is not the point. The point is, out of those 50 million people, the vast majority did not sign up to this.